Now, what seismic uh, survey cables are, they're used for oil exploration. And I used to work for a company that manufactures them. And what they basically are is they're called a streamer. They're about this diameter, about 60 millimeters diameter, and they're about 100 or 150 meters long. So you have to have a, actually have a factory 100 or 150 meters long to manufacture and test these things. And what they do is they contain, uh, it's basically like a 100 or 150 meter section, and it contains a whole bunch, like a 100 or so, of these uh, hydrophones. A hydrophone is just an underwater acoustic microphone. That's basically what it is. And it's just got a whole bunch of wiring inside, and it's got some fiber optics too in some of them, twisted pairs and power wires. And you join these 100 or 150 meter sections together like this, and you can form what's called a streamer up to six or eight or even sometimes 10 kilometers in length. And they're towed behind a huge seismic survey vessel out in the middle of the ocean. And they actually float uh, just below the surface, like um, five meters or such just below the surface. And the boat actually has these acoustic sounders on it. They're basically big air guns that just go bam, bam, and they generate um, uh, wideband acoustic noise into the water which bounces off the ocean floor and through the rock strata in the ocean floor and it returns and all these thousands of hydrophones, there's literally thousands in these whole arrays, um, pick up the signal and then they use huge Cray supercomputers to measure the, uh, to actually map uh, what's under the ocean and find oil and it's quite a complicated and expensive business. Now it's worth talking quickly about the uh, relay matrix because as I said uh, this product needs to measure insulation resistance high values in the order of like a hundred mega ohms uh, or even more. Um, in fact a hundred mega ohms was our spec so it had to go that high and this is where it comes in. I, uh, this is where the relay matrix and the choice of those really high quality uh, best brand on the market uh, read relays was so important. Because if you look at the spec for them, they've got an insulation resistance, they might say it's 10 gig. And that, and that sounds huge. Oh, it's 10 gig. Okay. But it's also 10 gig between the relay coils like this. This is a little thing and it gives you a total of 6.6 .6 gigs. And you might think, okay, that's still pretty high. That's huge. Not a problem. Uh-huh. But when you put it into a relay matrix like this, they're effectively in series and you got, you might have 48 of them in series and parallel combination, and that'll give you a total value. It comes down to 250 meg. And you might think, okay, that's still not too bad. Yeah, but it varies with temperature, time, someone farting across the other side of the factory. It's, it, it just varies all over the shop. It's terrible. It wanders over the space of minutes and, and seconds and things like that. It's pretty horrible. So to get around that, what you do is you have a fixed value resistor inside the box which you can disable the matrix with some more relays and it's a fixed 100 mega ohm resistor in this instance and the IR meter takes a compensation measurement it measures that 100 mega ohm resistance and then it quickly switches in the matrix and it measures the value and from the parallel it does it a few times to get some averages and then the parallel value using standard parallel resistance formula gives you your result and but the errors are pretty horrible in systems like this. There's all sorts of things due to capacitive charging of 100 meter long cables and oh, it's pretty awful. But uh, if you actually um, analyze the error, you'll get a graph like this, which quickly spirals into, you know, this is the percentage error. Okay, and yes, this is not a mistake, a thousand percent error, a hundred percent error when it gets to somewhere like a gig or 800 meg or something like that. The errors are just massive. And uh, a lot of people, um, managers for instance, couldn't really understand why our measurements were wandering all over the place. Well, we're measuring a hundred meter long antenna with these tiny little currents trying to measure a hundred mega ohms. It was crazy. But in the end, it did the job and well, there you go. Interesting.